when we went to the rap party that this was this was it for the Andy Griffith show. Um, and Andy was up there on the microphone talking. I just started sobbing. You wrote uh, about your dad. Here he was in his first full year of living and working in California, expecting to at last fulfill a dream deferred by the Korean War. And then some good fortune broke his way. But it wasn't in the form of a bonanza of work for him, but for his little kid, of all people. Maybe right. that turned into his superpower in terms of being your acting coach. I mean, it was basic actor studio stuff. It was Stanislavski, but distilled and presented in a way that, that I, at four and five and six years old, and Clint, even earlier, two, three, four, we could understand it and participate in a, in a, in a process. And line by line, he would say, see, here's the situation. Now, Opie doesn't want to um, do his homework. And of course, his, his dad wants him to do his homework, but he, Opie's trying to explain why he doesn't have to do his homework, or whatever the scene might be. So when he says this line, Oh, Pa, uh, I don't think that's really very important. You know, that's, he's just trying to get his dad to, to stop pressuring him. You know, so he would just break it down in the most granular way to the point where sometimes there'd be a scene in the Andy Griffith show where Opie was getting away with something. <laughs> I sort of remember asking him, geez, would that work for me? <laughs> and then, and my, my dad very quickly said, no, this is a scene in a TV show, and in real life you would not get away with that. Uh, so don't even try it. Dad's special gift was he wasn't intimidated by anybody or any situation. He was with Andy Griffith and Don Knotts and Aaron Rubin and Sheldon Leonard and these very powerful people in show business. And yet dad was the guy that would raise his hand and say, you know, excuse me, I don't think this is going in the right direction. I think that you're writing Opie to be too bratty. And, I, you know, listen, I, I think that might get you guys laughs, but I believe if you have a really good, honest relationship between Opie and, and his father, that it will play better. And, you know, my God, for, for a 30-year-old guy from Oklahoma to stand up, just when he gets his foot in the door in show business, he, he's putting himself in a position to get kicked right, right in the, the, the chestnuts, you know? And, and yet he did it in a way to where Andy listened and Sheldon listened. And they came back and they said, you know, you're right, Rance. You're right, let's, let's try to make it, you know, a more of an honest relationship. Boy, didn't that set up the show well. Didn't that decision to not make Opie a little jerk work out really, really well for the Andy Griffith Show? That's pop. I want to uh, take you to, if I could, a moment where after the Andy Griffith Show's wrapped, uh, you're 14, mm -hmm. it's a wrap party. Mm -hmm and Andy gets on the mic and says he wants to say something. All right. Take it from there. We didn't really have big rap parties at the end of each season, but this was different. We were the number one show in television, and yet Andy wanted to move on, and that's what was going to happen. And I was okay with it. You know, I wasn't like all year tormented by this. I was really interested in sports, already beginning to think about directing. Loved going back to regular school, even though there were always some challenges there. But when it hit on that last day of shooting, and then we went to the rap party, that this was, this was it for the Andy Griffith show. Um, and Andy was up there on the microphone talking. I just started sobbing. I realized I was leaving something behind that was, you know, more than a job. It was a way of life. It was a big part of my life. Th these people were like family. Um, and I was going to miss them terribly. And I didn't, suddenly, didn't know what it was going to be like to not have that show in my future. And those people in my future, almost 20 years later, uh, we did a reunion um, movie of the week. And uh, uh, I was asked to come back and be grown up Opie. And, and I was directing by then. I'd left Happy Days. 
I was busy, but Andy asked if I would do it, and I sure I said I would do it. And my sense of who they were as kind of wonderful people and how lucky I was to, to, to know them and to be working with them um, was completely unspoiled by my experience with them 20 years later. It was just great that I could realize that those childhood memories were accurate.